All right, let's try this again. I already filmed this whole intro and everything, but my idiot self um, left the microphone on for a couple of days. The battery's dead, so there's no audio, and I just look like an idiot talking um, with no audio. Here is our first video with the Camaro. Um, since we got it, I've had it up here for a little while, but finally now just getting around to some time to wrench on the thing. As you can see, ow, no fender on it because I ripped it off after I filmed that intro bit. Uh, we're basically tearing down the front end because uh, the front valence, the other front fender, which is already replaced, we already have the uh, reproduction one on the driver's side. Um, and so both front, basically the whole front end needs to take it apart. Um, front valence is hanging off, ready to be removed. And I already have the other front fender off. Basically what we're doing is replacing all the front fenders, placing this, I have a new one sitting right there next to the new front passenger side fender. We're also gonna take the bumper off. Um, there's these big giant springs in the bumper. These are the giant springs I was talking about. So basically they are there to make the crash support a little bit um, nicer, I guess, is a way to put it. Basically so when you hit stuff it doesn't damage it as bad. The bumper uh, can spring back and ride along these channels. So basically I'll pull this entire spring off and bury this into this channel as deep as it'll go and weld a bead around there and it'll just be a fixed bumper which isn't as safe but that doesn't matter when it looks good. We're also going to essentially tuck this bumper back in so it's not so much of a diving board make it look a lot cleaner um, and basically clean the whole front end up. It was in like a light front end collision so it messed up both the fenders as well as cracked this front valence that's why they need replaced. Um, luckily it came with another one of these front grill valence things and then the sheet metal for these cars are dirt cheap so we just bought those online. So yeah, let's get back to where we were. I'll show you me pulling the fender off and then we'll go from there. This is sort of like my first time really working on a old American car and actually sort of getting deep into it. And I really enjoy it. I like how this can all come apart and uh, I have like access to the side of the engine and everything. I think that's really cool. And it's really interesting to see the difference in the engineering between something like this and something like the Porsche. Because they are totally different. Um, something I find really interesting on these cars is the use of these giant bolts everywhere and just like a ton of them. They have like 20 of these half inch and 916 bolts just holding the fender on. And I also find it interesting, they've got like this pointed tip. Um, I don't know, a lot of people probably think that's pretty normal, but I've never seen that before on cars, so it's just something I found sort of curious. But yeah, now that I got the valence off, this bumper can uh, come off. I don't know about you guys, but since I never really ever work on these old American cars, my standard tools just sort of, uh, I own them, but literally I don't keep them organized whatsoever. They're in a duffel bag, which is sort of annoying. I definitely need to organize them now that I've got something to use them on. It's just usually I'm working on either old Euro or Japanese stuff or newer cars, which even the new American cars are metric by now. So, well, I thought as soon as I got that bolt out, the bumper was gonna fall out, but I guess I just unbolted the channels that they slide on, so. Just like 12 more bolts and then it'll be off. Jeez, this thing is a pain to get off. So of course I wasn't recording, but here's the train. Um, recurring character on this channel, uh, but jeez, that is so annoying. Uh, I just kicked the crap out of the bumper and it fell off. Uh, I thought they were attached, but they weren't. So it was just hanging there, about to fall on my toes. And it's super heavy actually. So here's the bumper. All of that steel is going to be removed, and that's a lot of weight. I mean, the bumper itself is also super thick, so it weighs a lot, but may as well get rid of, rid of weight where we can. I mean, this thing is not a uh, lightweight by any means, so especially if we can get weight off the front, because this thing is quite front heavy. But basically, we're gonna remove those, tuck those in, um, and that gives us that much of tuck, basically. Um, but I'm gonna just measure how much we need and do that, weld those, and there's another one on this side, and that is how we get the bumper tuck. Super simple uh, and free. Don't even have to do anything, lose weight, it's a win-win. 
I like that. Might help if I take the other nut out before trying to put a new one on. I thought it was the wrong size. And also pull off all the big steel brackets that uh, held those onto the bumper and just lose a little more weight. Basically, if I can lose weight, I'm gonna do it. There's no reason to be leaving big chunks of steel on the car for no reason. Somehow out of all the bolts that were holding all the freaking brackets on this bumper, there's only one stuck, so that's pretty awesome. I almost have all the brackets off and I can clean it up and get this plastic trim. That only my half of my face is in the shot. I get this rubber trim off the bumper because we're replacing it with some thinner stuff um, because that's all torn down anyways. All right, the bumper is stripped down to totally bare. There's nothing else on it. So I can reinstall these guys back on there, which are the part that it's gonna um, be mounted to now, and uh, throw it on the car once I have the rest of the stuff back on, which actually I think I should be able to put this on now since everything else is off. And this was the last thing I took off. Let's see if I can remember which side these went on. All right, in case my 20 different expl explanations of how this bumper is gonna work didn't make any sense, I'll just show it to you. So that's about where the bumper was before, and that's where it is now. So, if I grab the front valence, and sort of just muck it up. So yeah, you can see now that we're basically flush from the grill to the bumper, instead of having a big over gap. There's actually, it was actually so bad before that there was a gap in between the edge of the grill and the bumper. So this really cleans it up, and I think with the new grill and everything, it'll look a lot more, uh, just a lot better, especially because now you can actually see the lower valence. You can't even see it before because the front bumper hangs off so far. It looks so goofy. I'm not gonna weld uh, those uh, tubes yet on the bumper because I don't know how far it's gonna be exactly. Exactly. First, I'm gonna uh, assemble the rest of the front end back together before welding that bumper back uh, on there so that I can make sure it looks right because once I weld it, it's basically there for good. So now that everything's sort of back on, you can see how tight the bumper can get and it'll actually go in further. This is pulled out a bit. Um, but I just wanted to show sort of what the idea was and I think it's a much better look especially once the car is lowered it's sort of a monster truck right now which is a problem but once it's lowered to good ride height again that's <laughs> way too much so that'll clean it up a bit this sort of makes it look less horrible but nice and simple easy to do and we lost all that plus a bunch of brackets and about two pounds of bolts so plenty of uh, weight reduction as well the fitment on these fenders is okay i mean they're cheap they're not perfect they don't bolt up like the factory ones but uh, to be honest the factory ones which i imagine these are were uh all shimmed up and stuff too so maybe they do fit as well as the factory ones and the factory ones just have crappy fitment hard to complain though when they're as cheap as they were. Yeah, hopefully I have a good shot of how far it came out because 
That is looking much better, a lot more flush. So I'm officially making a habit out of not um, filming outro videos, but I'm back at home. Um, I look different because I shaved and showered, but um, thank you guys so much for watching this video. That's all I got done for the day. Um, had to leave right after I filmed that last clip. But I'm pretty happy with the progress. That bumper tuck went super easy. I know some cars it can be a lot more complicated where you have to fabricate the mounts and stuff. That, basically anyone could do it. Um, just requires a tiny bit of welding once you get the fitment right. But besides that, it's like dead easy. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed it. I wanna thank all of you guys that are new to the channel. I know there's still a bunch of new guys that uh, keep on coming in. So thank you guys for subscribing. And if you aren't already, then subscribe if you like my videos at least. And leave me a comment down below and let me know if you're excited for this build. I'm pretty excited for this car. It's just so much different than the Porsche. It's really fun to finally get working on something else. But thank you guys so much again. Hope you guys have a great day. Peace out.